Hello, this is Telecom TV. We are at the Wireless Global Congress in London. I'm talking with Mark Carter, who is the Chief Product Officer at Global Reach Technology. Mark, good to see you. Thanks for talking to us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's start with this. How are service providers using Global Reach's platform to offer Wi-Fi services to both consumer and enterprise customers? That's a good question. Right. So basically, our service our service platform falls into really two major camps. Um, the first one, which is the strongest, obviously, is the authentication platform. So we supply uh, a series of virtual radius and OAuth um, capabilities, which allow the service providers to tailor the authentication method that they wish, wish their customers to use. So for example, not just a typical username password, but things like uh, Google um, identity or Facebook identity and the traditional ones, but more and more now extending that into loyalty platform overlaps, um, which actually drives um, brand capability and brand loyalty in a certain cases. The second piece, of course, is the one that the user sees during the journey, which is the captive portal uh, traditionally. Um, we offer <coughs> the service providers a virtual platform, hosted platform, which allows them to design, build and deploy products for each of the sectors that they have. So where they have a brand they're working with, uh, a major service provider can allocate a brand guide and then deploy either to a large number of sites simultaneously or to allow customization site by site to add value to the service. So it's fundamentally a management platform for the user experience. Is it called Global Reach? I mean, is there a name you give to this, this, this product? It's, uh, the, the, the brand name for it is Odysseus, which is actually the platform as a whole. However, obviously within that brand name, there are specific sub subunits, uh, like the Virtual Radius, for example, or the Captive Portal Service, which uh, fundamentally they do what they sell on the tin. But yeah, Odysseus is the, is the trade name that you see quite often. Okay, good. Right, next question then. How is that helping the service providers to improve the services that we're talking about? I mean, after all, Wi-Fi, um, there are a lot of gripes about it. It can be a bit of a grisly experience sometimes. It can, and uh, I think you've seen at the show uh, um, uh, some of the answers to that. It, to a certain extent, we are limited in terms of the service capability by the investment and the backhaul, which is getting better because they start to understand the proposition now going forward. Um, but I think uh, you know, our specific capabilities around that user journey, uh, the, um, the introduction of Hotspot 2.0, profiles, um, making that, um, if you will, pre-deployment of the capability to the users before they arrive at the venue is, is massively important for the service providers, but also for the brands. Um, you may see at the show today, for example, we've started to show QR codes for onboarding of Hotspot 2 for the first time. So cutting down uh, the technical requirement, if you will, for the user and, and trying to break down the barrier to entry which, um, to a certain extent, Wi-Fi has always suffered with when compared to the mobile experience. And you know, our job is to, is to make that seamless, but not to um, destroy the brand awareness at the same time. So it's, it's a fine balance. Right, well, obviously the service providers are doing this for a reason, and that yes. is benefits to them. So what are the benefits of this Wi-Fi carrier roaming? Ah, oh, carrier roaming in particular, is it, it's an interesting subject. Um, fundamentally, um, it's, it, it does generate some revenue, but really for me, I would suggest the primary use of service providers for this is, is actually um, to avoid churn. In reality, if they can extend their service platform by working with other service providers to add value in other territories or, or other verticals, then it, then it helps that brand loyalty and builds up that capability. 
What you're starting to see now, though, of course, is um, as you see the roaming barriers for LTE come down, you're seeing uh, more of a heterogeneous mixed network view. When Wi-Fi has a, a, a strong card to play in that set in providing the uh, service providers with a lower cost transport for voice, for example, when people are traveling to specific areas where coverage may be bad or where they're traveling out of, out of territory. What about the consumers? You talked about the service providers, we talked uh, about right. global reach. What about the consumers? They're the ones who in the end are paying and they're the ones who in the end are, are, are finding that they like the service or dislike the service and app or app. Um, are they particularly aware of what's going on, do you think, and, and what's available to them? I don't think they are, actually, to be honest. Um, I think um, more and more we're starting to see a service requirement to move away from apps actually. It needs to be part of the bearer, the bearer network. It needs to work seamlessly. Uh, more and more, however, I think consumers are appreciating it, not, not directly for what it is, but for what it does. So you are seeing, actually, it's about the content. It's about the speed of the load. It's about getting back to the experience they want. So while they don't necessarily appreciate the technology, why should they? It's actually about making sure the service and the user experience is, is clean and better. So I don't think necessarily they, they care, honestly. I think what they want is a good experience. OK, last question sure. to you. Um, where do you see Wi-Fi in the 5G world? I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of um, talk that Wi-Fi is going to die this year, next year, sometime, never. But I've spoken to a lot of people and they say, oh, within 10 years, it'll be gone with 5G being ubiquitous and so on. Do you agree with that? And are you, are you evolving your products and services to prepare for that ultimate demise? Well, um, first of all, I don't agree with the demise because they do different things. They really do different things. So, uh, uh, and I think you've seen earlier in the conference, you know, people like uh, in your panel with Derek Peterson, you know, you see the carriers very clearly setting out a differential place. Yep. Um, uh, 5G has a role, particularly actually, in um, supporting Wi-Fi as the ultimate last 50 feet. You know, you have that high power, so uh, the example the, that I've heard recently was you may use 5G to a rural homestead, but actually the distribution on the property is more likely to be Wi-Fi, in fact, going forward. So I think there is a, a match. Um, what is encouraging, however, is um, with 5G and AX, for example, is you see them keeping pace in terms of the bandwidth capability. There's always a danger that you have lightning fast Wi-Fi and no backhaul, mm -hmm. which, which fundamentally affects the whole experience. Mm -hmm. So without these two technologies working together for different use cases, then there's a problem. In terms of our capabilities, yeah, we're looking at what we need to do to enable this, but we don't directly take account of the bearer. What we take account of is the capabilities of the bearer to shape the traffic, give a faster experience. Um, so I, I'm tending to concentrate on technologies like um, HTTPS2, for example, which is, which is smoothing out that user capability in low bandwidth situations. But where it comes to high bandwidth content, it's about managing the stream for that user, really. So from our point of view, while we're not taking account of it directly, we are taking account of its capabilities to support the service. Good stuff. Mark Carter, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.